So when we left him, Philip II of Spain was planning an invasion of England using a huge fleet of battleships called the Armada. And this fleet, led by the Duke of Medina Sidonia, who remember didn't want the job, partly because he got seasick, was aiming to sail up the English Channel and meet up with the Duke of Parma, who was going to bring the troops that he had stationed in the Spanish Netherlands over here and join the Armada in landing in England at Kent. And then they were going to march to London, they were going to overthrow Elizabeth, they were going to turn England into a Catholic country again, and they were going to claim it for Spain. And even after these plans are interrupted in 1587, with Drake's raid on the Armada at Cadiz, Philip is determined to push ahead with them. In fact, he rushes the plans even quicker after that, because he's angry, because he doesn't want to get caught again. And so the Armada is launched in 1588. I won't keep you in suspense about what happens. The Spanish lose, although you can probably tell that from the title anyway. But here's what happens. They first set off from Lisbon in Portugal on the 28th of May. And this is a huge fleet. It's made up of 130 warships, 130 armed with apparently 2,431 guns and 125,000 cannonballs. It also contains 30,000 men most of whom are soldiers. And it sets sail from Lisbon, sails north up the Spanish coast and hits bad weather. So it then goes and shelters at Corona to fix the damage and to wait for better wind and better weather. And then it sets off again on the 21st of July. This fleet is sailing in a crescent formation, so sort of a moon shape, and it has the strong, well-armed, faster ships on the outside, protecting the smaller and the less armed and the slower supply ships in the middle. And apparently, this crescent formation was nearly seven miles wide, so seven miles of ships across. Just less than. And it sails from Corona into the English Channel. And we'll get a little bit closer to that here. It's first start spotted in England by people near Lizard Point in Cornwall. On the 29th of July. And they trigger a system that they've set up to give a warning if this happens. And this is a system of beacons or fires that have been built in high places. And the idea is that the first person to spot the Spanish ships will light the fire, which will give the signal to the next one to light theirs, which will give the signal to the next one to light theirs, and so on, until the warning has been passed up to London. And as soon as they've heard about it, the British fleet sets sail from Plymouth. I'm going to show those in blue. And they attack the Armada, and they manage to capture two ships.
but they can't really break this very strong crescent formation and so the Spanish Armada continues on its way. Now remember they're hoping to meet with the Duke of Parma who is supposed to set sail from Dunkirk to meet them. The problem is that Dunkirk is a shallow water port. The Duke of Parma doesn't hold any deep water ports and therefore he can only use small boats to load up his crew. So it's going to take him 48 hours to load his army onto the boat plus he only hears that the Armada is in the channel one week later so he's nowhere near ready to meet up with them at this point. The Armada is hoping, the Duke of Medina Sidonia is hoping to shelter near the Isle of Wight. However, when they get there, the English fleet chase them and there's a really heavy exchange of gunfire between the 3rd and the 4th of August. And apparently during this exchange of gunfire, the English were firing six times the cannonballs that the Spanish were managing to fire. So the Spanish are really outgunned, so much so that the English commanders decide to stop firing because they want to save their ammunition um, for a better battle situation. So the Armada continues, but it can no longer shelter near the Isle of Wight and it can't wait for the Duke of Parma. Then on the 6th of August, the English employ a trick. They wait until nightfall and then they load eight old ships with tar and gunpowder and loaded cannons. They set them on fire and they sail them into the Spanish fleet. And these are called fire ships. So there we are. Sometimes they were called hell burners. And the Spanish see these burning ships coming towards them and they panic. Some of them cut the ropes on their anchors so that they can get away really quickly. And what this does is it breaks up that crescent formation and makes the armada much more vulnerable. And this is what the English have been waiting for. And they engage them in battle on the 8th of August. In the Battle of Gravelines. And again, the Spanish are completely outgunned. The English managed to sink five Spanish ships in this battle. The rest flee and they're also caught in the wind and driven north. So they begin to sail up north. They've completely missed the Duke of Parma. They are pursued by the English. The English chase them until they've passed the border with Scotland. And at that point, the English turn round and come back again. So the English turn round on the 12th of August. So if we go back to the original map, the Armada has sailed up the channel, it's been defeated at Gravelines, and then it's been driven north. They then make the decision rather than trying to come back the way they've come, partly because of the wind and partly because of the English ships behind them, they decide to try and return home by sailing north around the coast of Scotland and the coast of Ireland, but they run into trouble here too. There's a very strong northwest wind that drives them into the Irish coast and there are storms. I always keep on thinking about the poor old Duke of Medina Sidonia with this and his seasickness. Can't have been a nice experience. And they don't have charts of the Irish coast either, which means that their ships are quite often caught on quite treacherous rocks. So during this journey, 53 of those ships are destroyed by storms. And even when there are survivors, if they straggle ashore in Scotland and Ireland, they're generally killed by the people who live there. So it's not until 
October and November that the Spanish Armada straggles home with just 67 surviving ships. And in the course of the journey, they've lost 20,000 men. They've suffered from sickness, their morale is appalling. This is a really, really huge defeat for the Spanish forces and a really big disappointment to Philip's plans. <laughs>